Hi, it's day 26 of March Madness and today is side twist or side bend. Um, I'm going to start going through side twist prep. Um, so the full version of this exercise is generally extended arm and quite loaded for the wrist and the shoulder. As I mentioned to you when I talked about the leg pull front, it's a bit tricky for me as if I've got a previous wrist injury to do that on that fully extended arm. So sometimes I can, but it's not always appropriate for me. So I'm going to work on the version that suits me, which is a modification on a bent elbow rather than the extended arm, which is a textbook um, classical position. So we're go through um, a few options for that and a few variations. So if you come onto your mat on one side, so you're going to have your elbow under your shoulder and a right angle of your arm. So you can either make a fist and, and sort of press into the floor to lengthen up or you could turn your forearm and palm down to the mat. Whichever way you feel you can almost press down to get a little bit of length and space around your shoulder and your neck. Okay, and the next um, piece to think about is that you're going to have your legs stacked like oyster or clam. So the, the knees are bent and the feet are in line with your bottom. But otherwise, we're looking for a diagonal line of your spine. It's a good, it helps to start with, it's a good idea to perhaps wrap your top arm around your waist, just to make sure we're not sinking down towards the floor before we begin. So your first option is just taking your breath in and as you breathe out and center, you're just pressing the floor away. So we're just trying to create some space here before we think about lifting your body away. So you might want to play around with either that palm down or that fist position. And if you need to tilt the head, turn the head slightly to improve the comfort for your neck, that's fine, go for that, okay? And then the next option is you breathe out and center is I'm going to hover up. I'm gonna keep that length through the waist and if you can, you could float that arm up and over. Breath there and then slowly lower back down. So landing almost silently rather than with a thud. If you need to keep the hand there, that's fine. Try, try with the fist and try with the palm down. So breath and center, up and over, breath and lowering it down. So that's a really good and strong preparation and on its own right. And um, the other option that I sometimes work on is I'm just gonna bring my front leg forward. So my foot is flat on the floor and my other foot is just, and um, the front of my foot is behind my ankle or my heel. So I'm gonna just lengthen that oyster shape away. And then as I lift up, I'm gonna extend and lengthen the legs away together as well. So if you need the hand here or you float up, that's fine. Just find your way with that. So as you breathe out center, I'm coming up, breath in, and I'm going to slowly lower and come back down again. You could start with the hand on the inner part of your knee and just play around with those angles. So breath and center, I'm lengthening and coming up, and then I'm slowly lowering to come back again. And then once you've done that, if mermaid position is comfortable for you, do come into that for a moment, otherwise just seated and let's just lengthen out the side you were weight bearing on. So you can inhale up and exhale over and just take a few breaths into there before we switch on to the other side. So I'm gonna swing my legs around to the other side, elbow under shoulder, feet in line with bottom, knees bent, keeping that length to lift through the waist, so playing around whether you have the fist and you press the arm into the floor, whether you have the palm down, whichever suits you and, and experiment as, as you go. So first option is you breathe out and center is just to press the floor away. So you're trying to give yourself space around the shoulder, around your neck, and then breath, keep scooped. You're gonna lift up, maybe floating that arm up and over like your side reach. Let's try and breath to stay. And then as you breathe out, let's lower silently to keep the hand here if you need to, or on your thigh, so breath and centre to come up. See how it feels with the fist or the palm down, just find which version suits you. And then the, the, the progression with the legs is I'm going to just extend that oyster shape of the legs a little bit and hook my top leg in front of the underneath leg. So my heel is um, in contact with the front of my underneath foot. Okay, and then from here as I lift up, I'm going to extend those legs away, maybe floating the arm or keeping it down from here. So as you breathe out center, I'm gliding up, inhale to stay, 
and then we'll exhale to lower. You might notice this is my trickier side. So breath and center to lengthen up and over. And I'm gonna slowly lower. And then I'm coming back just to mermaid or seated. And just let that side your weight bearing on glide up. So inhale up, exhale over, and just take a few breaths into there. And then well done. I hope that's been helpful for you. And as I mentioned, full version with that extended arm, but that's not always appropriate for me. So I hope that this is a good option for you to practice at home as well. Thank you.